Now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hook up. Get ready for more of the best fishing information and the hottest tips on improving your angling skills. Let's talk hook up is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best. Shimano, and by Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. And now, Southern California's sports fishing voice, the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Good morning, anglers. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. This is the uh, first hour of the show. It's Rick and myself just having a good time. I'm Rick down in Palmas, and man, just couldn't ask for a better show. And just always fun doing this with you, Rick. And and if you want to give us a shout, it's uh, 213-432-1090. Giving away a handmade uh, Anza fillet knife or uh, text the show. Text the show via the app like uh, Benny did. Benny down on Cedros uh, with Jeff and uh, sent us a... Uh, a howdy doody there. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah kind of cool. Benny. Yeah, thank you, Benny. And Benny and the boys down there are having a good time with Jeff. No doubt, man. Yeah. We're having a great time here this morning. Like Corey said, this is just a fun show. It's, it's questions, it's answers, it's talking story, having a good time, talking some fishing, and that's what we're doing today. And we can't wait to hear from you. And speaking of talking fishing, we're going to find out what's biting out there because it's time for the catch report. Today, our fishdope.com report is sponsored by Summit Gasoline. Discount Everingham Brothers Bait Dish Certificates. Uh, they have ice, they have fishing licenses, beer, soda, water, snacks, coffee, and most importantly, the best prices on gas and diesel. It's Summit Gasoline at the San Diego Sports Arena. Easy in and out with your boat trailer. And for a limited time, which is still running, get 100 pounds of free ice with a minimum of a 35-gallon purchase. You heard that right, 100 pounds of ice for free. There's no better place to get your gas and load up for everything you need to go for fishing than summit gasoline they're at the sports arena in san diego a great spot and we're going to start it off with our fishdope.com reporter the private boater buddy captain mark wish of pacific edge is on the line good morning mark good morning mark hey morning ricky good morning Corey. it's been fun listening to you guys this morning here <laughs> but uh <laughs> we're having a good time man, doing it, mark. Was... <laughs> i can tell that's awesome but quite the notable start to october this year between that big fish fishing out on the banks and that spectacular tropical system we had with that world-class lightning show, both inshore and offshore, was man, it was just absolutely unbelievable to watch that for a few hours. And then some of the videos I saw from the guys on the outside was just nothing short of fantastic. That was crazy, crazy. But, crazy. Uh, yeah. So, like I was mentioning, that big fish out there on the bank—that's definitely the headline situation for this week. Nothing short of fantastic for several days, multiple days catchables in the shallows early and then the big boys on the kites and drifting with live flyers and dropping jigs and every other thing that you can think of you know the big fish are out in the deeper water over the edge mostly in the dark there but just crazy good fishing and uh but that was then and sadly the weather's up now and it's forecast to stay that way for a little bit so kind of accordingly if you think about trying to get out there might be uh, a little rugged conditions closer to home uh, we've got some really good Dorado fishing for October here. You know, usually they're kind of winding down by now. It seems like they're just kind of still biting for us. And some nice ones, and it's not too far from in San Diego at all. The inside edge of that fish is on a 302. That's where some of the guys are fishing this morning, and they're already biting a little bit, even though the weather's choppy. And then here's the big breaking news of the week in several months, actually. In a uh, different style of fishing, you know, not not so much tuna stuff, but inshore. And here's the power of fish dope at work. Those guys are on the pulse. Danny just called me a few minutes ago with the great news that uh, Nacho has live squid for sale. It's the first oh, live squid wow. info, first squid available in, in uh, several months. And I don't know, I don't have any idea as to where it came from, how they caught it, how much he has, anything. But just the fact that he has some is an indication that the uh, winds of change are blowing here and uh, water's cooling down, squid's showing up, and we'll be talking more about sea bass and big halibut and yellows on the bait grounds uh, more and more as we get into fall and winter. But Nacho's got a little squid now, and you guys do want to be uh, concerned if you're trying to fish a little bit local. I'm not sure exactly what the closures are doing with the oil spill we had. You know, a lot of the Huntington Beach areas were shut down there. They did open uh, 
Newport Harbor and Dana Harbor yesterday afternoon, I guess. So that's good news. So hopefully everything's getting back to normal there. And uh, we do got some weather to contend with. Pay close attention, but get out if you get a chance and go get some of our good fine fall fishing. Perfectly said, Mark. There's some very good fishing that happened this week, but keep your eye on that weather. Don't go offshore Monday, Tuesday. That is not the that is not the day that is not the day to go do it. No matter what rig you're in, but you know what? Uh, it 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 you know it calms down a little bit later into the week, and hopefully with that that fishing just gets right back to it, man. A great report. Very fun to see all that big fish going, and you know you've been around for a long time and seen a lot of it, and have done a lot of long range fishing and. This is the new hurricane bank, man. It is just crazy what is happening out there. Yeah, unusual it, for sure. It, you know, it it just if it, it, like you said, you know, I've, I've had a good fortune to be doing this for a little bit, and uh, you know, see, see things come and things go. But man, we've never seen anything in my fishing career that that parallels this. It's just unbelievable the amount of fish and the grade of fish, and that we kind of figured out how to catch them. It's yeah, just, I mean, it's just we, insane. Yeah. We talked about it at the beginning of the show, but it, just to say it again, the Queen's three-day trip has 63 over 100 and, and 25 over 200. <laughs> like, Golly, how, how is man. that a thing? Now, is is there anything? I, I heard you guys saying that, and that's just it's it's just hard to wrap your mind around that. But is, is there anything that you can think of in terms of other catches that parallel with anything like that? I mean, has is, is, is anybody ever come in unloaded on a three-day and then went back out? I've I mean, never in my crazy. life have I heard. I mean, I've been, it seemed like, you know, like you say, I'm not trying to say I've been there forever. I've been around that landing for a long time now, and I don't ever remember seeing that happen. Yeah. Wow. Pretty fun stuff for sure. Well, Mark, certainly these, a great report. These are the good old days, guys. <laughs> I got news for <laughs> you. You ain't lying, buddy. No doubt yeah. about it. And if you want to keep up with what's going on in these good old days, fishdope.com is the source. Like you said, Mark, uh, hot info on bait, hot info on fishing, keeping you safe on weather, closures. Everything is available. Danny does such a great job putting it all together. And if you want to save 20 bucks off of a new membership to fishdope.com, use the code HOOKUPNOW. HOOKUPNOW, all lowercase. No space saves you 20 bucks on a new membership. And if you want to keep in touch with what's going on at Pacific Edge, Mark, how do we find you? Well, Ricky, we're in Huntington Beach. We're on the corner of Bolsa Chica and Edinger. The phone number at the store is area code 714-840-4262. And the website's PacificEdgeTackle.com. And, hey, buddy, I'm glad you're going down swell to where you're going. But I, <laughs> I just I love fishing that island. I can't wait to hear your reports. Yeah, me too. I uh, hope there's a big. I uh, hope there's a big block <laughs> while we're down there. I think we'll be. I think we'll be tucked in tight for a couple of days. But uh, ho- hopefully, as that wind passes, we get plenty of time getting in. Appreciate it, Mark, and I'll look forward to giving the report to you next week. Okay, you got it. We'll take, see you guys, everybody. Oh man, all the way from Bolsa Chica and Edger, Huntington Beach, all the way down to Mission Bay at Sea Fourth Sport for Fishing. Good morning, Marcos. Nice to hear from you. And what's? Uh, I know there's been a lot of cool stuff going on at the landing there too. Yeah, definitely a little shift in the fishing over this last week here. Uh, still very good fishing, especially on those day and a half and longer trips. Still seeing a lot of bluefin, um, especially early in the week. The Tribute actually had 22 on one of their day and a half, and one of the fish was up to 256 pounds. So there's definitely some still big bluefin. And again, we talk about it. I mean, I don't think there's been a period of more than a few days where we weren't catching bluefin. Going back, back to what? April, March? So it's been a spectacular. Yeah, so it's a spectacular bluefin season. They're still picking away at those. Not seeing as much of that on the one days. We're still seeing a little bit, a little shift on the uh, full day trips. Still seeing a little bit of bluefin in there, occasional yellowfin. Actually started to see a lot more Dorado over the last few days and some yellowtails. So nice mix there. Uh, some double digits of Dorado and other fish on there. Half day still plunking away at those bottom fish. Some decent calico bass fishing mixed in there. So once this weather blows through here, I'm sure we'll get a, at least a few more weeks of great fishing here. And like I said, we've got a lot of options here. If you want to do the half day trip, get out there and just get on the water, catch some bottom fish, some calico bass. Uh, we got those running. We've got those full day trips running to San Diego and the Sea Watch are still online. Those trips are a little easier to get on now, but they're still looking you know, booked out two, sometimes three weeks ahead of time. So definitely, if you see an opening there, you find one you want to go, make those reservations as soon as you can. The one day's day and a half, still plunking away at those tuna, dry yellowtail, and all those trips are online. 
Check the website, seaforthlanding.com. Got our full schedule up there for all those trips. You can make reservations straight on the website right there. You can always call us at the office, 619-224-3383. I'm more than happy to have you guys come down, visit in person, say hi, ask some questions, and get on a trip and get out there fishing because it's certainly not time to put away that gear quite yet. Yeah, no doubt about that. We'll let this, like you say, we'll let this letter go through, and we'll get right back to getting them. And certainly, some good fishing still to be had. If anything, you know, the, the these these next few weeks in years past have been some of our very best fishing of the year. And I hope we get right back to it, Marcos. And we talk about this every year. We have great fishing in September through October. And generally what happens is that people just get fish out. I mean, it's not unusual. Towards the end of October, going into November, still catching fish, but it's just harder to get people out on the boat. And it's definitely don't put it away your because we're going to get some more good fish in here. Yep. No doubt about that, Marcos. Great report, as always. We'll look forward to talking to you next week. We'll talk to you then, guys. All right. Appreciate uh, that. Yeah, and the Catch Report is sponsored by the Fish Pros of Fishman's Processing in San Diego. Not only do they offer the best processing for your fish when your trip returns to the San Diego landings, as well as your private boat catch. And now with Fish Pros and Market, you can purchase uh, fresh fish, smoked, jerky, all their spices, rubs, and their smoked cheese, and their famous tuna burgers, and that amazing poke kit, too. Uh, they are now open at their uh, new location in Old Town on Taylor Street. Call for details or order online at fishmansprocessing.com. And, man, it's just such a nice location where they're at, Rick. That, awesome. uh, right there on the corner, you know, right at the railroad tracks, looking looking for Old Town right there on the corner. You can't miss them. Such a perfect setup now. You know, go in, get your same-day fish done, yeah. go over to Perry's, get breakfast, get, right? you know, come over, get your fish, get on the road. Like, And, and, and you say get on the road. It's like perfect if, if you're driving up north to L.A. or somewhere, get yeah. on the 5. If you're going east on the 8, I mean, they, south on the 5. Yeah, they picked a perfect, like, central. central. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that, that's well said. And, boy, you want to talk about some busy people right now. Know, Those yeah. guys have their hands full oh. with the fantastic fishing that's going on at Guadalupe, all the big fish coming from the other trips. It's been very, very busy, and reservations are a must right now. So if you're going, you you, you need to make a reservation. It's no longer a convenient thing, but uh, but an actual necessity that uh, you get, have get to. through and get that reservation in right now. Yeah, wow, that's, that's crazy. That, that kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you talk about the queen bringing in over 60, 60 <laughs> something over 100. <laughs> Just, oh, my God. Yeah, pretty, pretty fun. Well, hey, the phones are packed up. Corey, everyone's excited to get roll back to it. Let's do oh, it. Oh, let's do it. Rick hey. Gus. Gus from Burbank. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Yo, you guys. Hey, Gus. Uh, Hey, I, I I was wondering if anyone has heard uh, any rumors if the Fred Hall show is returning uh, to Long Beach this year, next year. Very interesting, huh? I mean, there's there is uh, rumor. I mean, that yeah. that you know, as a uh, manufacturer myself, and Rick having you know part of the shop, and 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 there is a push to try to make it happen, Gus. But Rick, Rick is it? I think so. I mean, I think that the you know that the people that have the show are are putting the show on, and uh, we're just kind of kind of everybody be standing by and waiting to see. I, I don't have an answer. I know that there is intention to run the Fred Hall show for sure, and you know we'll just wait and see how those guys do. It, it's going to be interesting to see how things happen. It'll be you know it's just a it's a tough year this year with a you know the the lack of inventory that's in our our industry. But um, yeah, as far as I know, they are definitely trying to um, put it together. To put the show together so we'll we'll, uh, we'll keep you updated as as more info comes along gus i just uh don't have anything specific but you know i know there's dates listed on their website and you know hopefully they can they can pull it off yeah right and i know some of the emails that were coming out gus uh for the manufacturers would have typically been six months earlier so, so they're kind of coming out kind of late with it all we'll see if the if the industry can put it all together that, that's it we're standing by we'll do our best to keep you abreast of it gus appreciate the phone call as always very much let's keep rolling talk to randy calling us from Costa mesa this morning what's up randy welcome to let's talk hookup hey rick Corey, how are you this morning it's been a great show to listen to a lot of fun <laughs> thanks yeah, buddy. A, lot, a lot of fun randy good morning um, hey Hey, you guys travel uh, the CBX a lot more uh, frequently than I do. I'm going to be going to the ranch next weekend for the first time. Uh, oh, yeah. And, well, ranch for about the fourth time, but the, the CBX for my first time. Can you guys tell me just a little bit about 
you know, my pre trip, what I need to be prepared for when I cross and that kind of stuff. Just give me a one two. You're talking one to the right guy. Corey was there hours ago. <laughs> yeah, I was just there yesterday. Uh, less than 24 hours ago, cross <laughs> is super, super easy. It's one of the easiest things in the world. I think it's like a, a $16 fee, you know, going going each way and and you can you can book that on the on cbx you can just google it look it up there and and uh and they they send you a, a thing to uh you know your ticket basically like a, like a boarding pass yeah. on your on your phone you, yeah. you could buy it when you get there if you want but you, you can uh, you know avoid the the couple of person line by uh by getting it ahead of time um you can buy one yeah, way I or you can I buy your round trip when i got keep... when i booked my ticket on dolores oh there nice. you go okay. yeah, I yeah I so you already have it, it and, and yeah. And and that's the beauty of it right there, uh, Randy, is that it's not just a border crossing where everybody can cross. You have to hold mm -hmm. a, uh airline ticket to be able to use the CBX. And so there are very few people using it. I've been in there in the last uh, year or two where there is a tremendous amount of people. You know, there's uh, 150 people going through it, but it's so darn easy. Uh, this particular time, there's very few people going and extremely few coming back. We were literally the only ones using uh, the customs coming back. That's the most beautiful part, oh, Randy. So nice. Is uh, coming back. It's, again, yeah. only those that hold an airline ticket can use it. And, and uh, there's six, seven officers, and there was six of us. I yeah. mean, imagine how streamlined that is. To, to break it down, CBX is yeah. a very easy cross across the border. You show up. You have your bags. You um, you either purchase there or purchase ahead your your little ticket. You scan it just like you were going through a security gate at the airport. You go through a little security gate and it puts you into the you know into the walkway that is only for the CBX people. R Rosie has a great description of it, and she says it's just like it's like bumper cars. It doesn't matter which you know which which direction you go, and you if can you, only if, go one way. If you know the straight line or not, it, it makes no difference. You can only go one way, and it's right into the airport. It it is. Very easy to follow. There are definitely people there if you had questions. But in describing it, I always feel like I'm doing it a disservice because there's, you know, you want to make somebody as prepared for something as possible. But there's nothing to prepare for. It is so, it's so easy. You just super super you, easy. You get in and go. Here's, I assure you, Randy, you will have zero issue. Yeah, and here's the one thing I can tell you: the number one mistake made that a few people make is. When you're in the baggage area coming back, you're coming home and you're in the baggage area, be very, very, very careful. If you're following the 99% of the flow of the people in that the, are leaving in the Tijuana airport, at the Tijuana airport, in the, in the baggage area, okay, there's a big sign that says CCBX, but there's only a couple people going that direction. If you follow the 99 out of 100, you're exiting the airport, and once you exit, you are done. You cannot use the oh, CCBX. Oh, that's a good tip. There's no other way to uh. get back into that baggage area. You are done. Okay. So you're having to cross at the border. So you catch a cab and go home or something. Just remember, the baggage area yeah. and <laughs> CBX. But, but again, very, very yeah, well-marked giant signs. It, it's not hiding. Yeah, yeah right. right. Super simple, Randy. Well, that's well, great. So for you, Randy. Thank Have you. a great time. That's, that's Report cool. back to us. Let us know how it goes. Oh, I definitely will. Thank you, guys. All right, yeah. have, have, hey. have a great time. And more trip. importantly, enjoy his time at the ranch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah, it's a that CCBX is a game changer. It I mean, is. inexpensive flights out of Tijuana, easy to deal with. I, I'm, I'm Rick, about. Rick, it. I'll, I'll tell you, my, uh, the, the talk about El Salto over the years and all that, and going down, having fun, and and it, it really wasn't that lustrous and exciting for, for me to have to fly from LA to Phoenix and transfer from there to Mazatlan and just like an entire day of travel and uh and even like crossing over the border and having to do it you know it's, it's kind of fearful right it's kind of a nail biter at times what changed the whole thing for me was the CBS yeah. and then being able to cross and and doing it with ease and literally you leave home in the morning and you're fishing just like going with Jeff at Cedros or Rosie or any of the other outfitters you are literally fishing that morning. It, yeah, it's it just it it is the it's the game changer. It, it yeah, you, you said it to avoid border traffic coming home on the Cedros style trips. It's just. It's huge. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Well, the phones are packed up, as are the texts. We're having a great time. Let's jump back into the phones. Great. Let's do it. How about Daniel? Daniel calling from Rancho Cucamonga. Good morning, Daniel. Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, guys. I have a question for Rick. Rick, um, 
on on your on your tac 25 do you fill that rail up with the uh, core or straight uh, solid um power pro and the second question can you tell me the model number on your gamagatsu hooks for your light bait uh yeah for sure daniel so uh, my tac 25 that's a great question and you could debate both of them there's not a right or a wrong answer i fish 100 pound spectra and my, my tac 25 i have the hollow ace i, I use hollow um, for 100 pound, I, I really like the rigging advantage that hollow gives you. Rigging advantage meaning you can do an insert style connection. Um, we can splice the line if there's a if, if there's an issue, if there's a tangle, if there's a rub, I can redo it. Um, long range fishing every couple of years, I usually strip off the top hundred yards worth of line off of my reels and just cut it and discard it. And I splice in a new hundred yard. So every couple of seasons I'm fishing with fresh, clean spectra. You know, if you were fish fly line and a live bait and the hook, you know, backs around in the head and you, you wind that sardine back and it's helicopter in the whole way and it twists up your spectra with hollow. You, you can just splice in a new section with no knots and no ease. So I, I, for 100 pound for me, I, I tend to go with hollow. Um, solid would be a, a great choice too. It's a little skinnier diameter and has a little less drag in the water. So your bait is able to to pull that through the water a little better. So who, who's to say what's the, the better or worse, you know, a little better bait swimming or a little better rigging. But for me personally, 100 pound, I like, uh, I like the hollow. Um, as far as the model number, I, I can look it up for you. I, 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 um, I don't know the specific number off the top of my head, but it's the Gamakatsu Nautilus. And I, I actually like the standard wire Nautilus hook. I, I like Nautilus Light. I, I like Nautilus HD. But uh, for, for me, I just fish the regular Nautilus. And uh, 1 through 3 is, is what I tend to fish with more than anything else. I hope that uh, it's great. Yeah, I hope that hope that an- answers it for you, Daniel. You getting ready to go on a trip? Yeah, uh, uh, on this this coming weekend, um, on the Fury, we want to do a two day. So I'm I'm trying to get ready for for the fat ball or whatever's out there right now. Totally. You know, um, and, and flat fall fishing, that, that, that's another, you know, I'll, I'll throw one more line that you might choose, not, not to keep throwing options at you, but again, none of them are a wrong answer. I like hollow for the rigging reasons. Uh, Max Quattro is great in that it's skinning, your bait swims good, but you might think about using that Power Pro um, depth hunter offshore. It's a colored spectra where every hundred feet the spectra changes color. And for flat fall, and man, it's pretty slick to to have an idea of when you're down two hundred feet versus three hundred feet versus four hundred feet. So uh, that's a solid spectra, also. So you, you might give that a might give that a chance if you're if especially if you're going to be doing a lot of flat falling with that reel. Would that be a hundred pound? I, I could probably throw that on my tac twenty. Yep. Yeah, that, they they do have it in hundred pound, and that would be the ideal. That would be the ideal one. It would be your tack tac twenty with that in hundred pound. It'd be perfect. Perfect rig for flat falling for a big bluefin. Daniel, appreciate the call very much. Uh, Good luck on your trip. I hope you guys get them. Let's head down south now. We got Pete on the line calling us live from Palmas de Cortez. Good morning, Pete. Good morning, Pete. Hey, buenos dias, guys. Uh, doing a great job at the shows. How's everything going? Oh, we're having uh, lots of fun, man. Doing very good. Phone yeah. lines are packed up. Corey came off a great trip. This bluefin's still biting up here. We're having fun. Sounds good. Yeah, Corey sounds like you had an epic trip down at Sedros Island fishing charters with Jeff. Sounds like a, a fun time. And, uh, boy, we're having a fun time here at Palma State Cortez. I, I, I can't wrap my head around the fact that this is our 27th annual <laughs> Palma State Cortez. It's all spectacular. It's like, holy mackerel, where did the time go? But, uh Palmas is as great as ever, you know, and, and every year they seem to improve. In fact, we're in a condo here. I'm looking out, um, and they're building a new bar right in front of the and, – and, and fire pits next to the, the new sushi bar that they put in and, of course, the restaurant. So always doing some progress here. I saw Bobby the other day, and, of course, Eddie's been at our uh, gatherings every evening, and Eddie Dalamo. Uh, has been such a great help here at Palmas and uh, so supportive. These guys are are just uh, so fantastic to work with. Here. We have a nice group. We have 55 anglers in the tournament, and uh, uh, they're out fishing today, day one of the tournament today. It's a little breezy today, but very, very fishable. You know, 13, 14 knots of breeze this afternoon, but very, very fishable. Fishing is kind of challenging. I, I'm a little concerned because there's literally – 
virtually no tuna here. And we have, of course, $500 cash prize from statewide stripes for uh, the largest tuna and then $500 cash from statewide stripes for the largest wahoo and dorado. Plenty of Dorado around. Dorado fishing is like up there. They're, as John used to say, like Berman. They're, they're everywhere. And so there are tons <laughs> of Dorado around. A few Wahoo around, but I certainly hope that the, something changes on that tuna front there. Most of the boats are running south, uh, down past um, Cabo Pomo and south of that. And, you know, kind of the usual area down there being around us. Um, but uh, there's a lot of marlin around, some sailfish. So if you want to catch marlin and such, uh, rooster fish, I guess, are very, very good rooster fish fishing. Or those that want to go rooster fish fishing too. But, um, so uh, we're going to be able to see. Hopefully, uh, I'm going to be on the boat tomorrow. I'm going fishing uh, with Rich Top on his boat. Uh, maybe Sueno tomorrow uh, with the guys uh, with the tournament committee. Today we're uh, we're going with Can Do. Alex from Can Do has taken us on a back roads tour of uh, of the um, arroyos and, the, and and back and then then have lunch back way back in the uh, in the greenery. Everything is so green down there. It's so lush and beautiful. Flowers everywhere. Uh, butterflies everywhere it's just oh, cool. fantastic we took the we took the um we got a couple of side by sides for a couple of days we took the side by sides up to punta pescadero yesterday and had lunch and did some snorkeling beautiful beautiful snorkeling and then we took uh the, the up the arroyo the normal arroyo right here in, in los barriles and it, interesting enough there was so much water from that last storm that it washed all the sand away so we could only make it up about Two thirds of the way, and then you had to hike up to the end. There, it's, uh, it. Uh, I've never seen in in the twenty plus years I've been doing the quadding down here, and I've never seen so much water in that arroyo. It's wow. unbelievable. Wow. No water kidding. Is down here. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. But it was fantastic. Today is supposed to be very hot. It's supposed to be in the mid nineties here today. So it's going to be uh, a little warmer than tomorrow. It's supposed to. Uh, get much, much cooler. But the water temperature yesterday when we were snorkeling is like in the mid to high 80s. It's oh, really, geez. really warm, wow. beautiful. And then there's that little tropical disturbance. I'm not sure, sure you saw that that's down south that's kind of moving this way. It looks like it's veering off of Cabo. Unfortunately, uh, we're going to go uh, – we're fishing tomorrow, and then the tournament wraps up tomorrow evening uh, with the awards and such like that. And then uh, we're going to go diving, scuba diving down Cabo Fumo Rich and uh, – and Larry are going to go uh, fishing again on Monday, and then we fly home Tuesday, and then it looks like that the disturbance moves in on Wednesday. So we'll get out of here and hopefully get home safely before that comes. So, uh, but it doesn't look too bad. It looks like kind of just a little brush uh, with some rain into Cabo on Wednesday, and then it's out of here. Because the Lynn Rose Tournament, uh, where they're doing a big honorarium, I guess, for Jack Nielsen at that tournament, follows us here. So. Um, anyway, everything's great down here at Palmas de Cortez. Beautiful, beautiful spot. Um, you know, it just keeps getting better and better here. And if uh, you want to jump on our tournament next year, it's not too early to start because people are already signing up for next October because it is a beautiful time of the year down here. Well, that sounds great, buddy. Certainly good. Uh, glad that you're having conditions. It's it's cool and kind of overcast up here, so uh, enjoy the heat. Sounds like some good fishing to be had for everybody. We wish you guys continued success, and we'll look. Uh, sounds like you're fishing tomorrow, so we'll probably look forward to hearing the wrap up of everything uh, next week. Yeah, I'll do my best. The cell phone's working from the boat tomorrow. I'll do my best to kind of give you an update of what happened on day one. Yeah, but, we'd love to uh, hear it. Tomorrow is supposed to be flat calm down here, so we're looking forward to that. And uh, so we'll we'll, uh, we'll hopefully have uh, good conditions, and I'll be able to give you a call. But if not, we'll wrap it up next week for you. And thank you guys very much for covering. And, Ricky, good luck on the Shogun if I don't talk to you. I know a little bit of weather there, but I know that big steel boat can handle it, and you'll be fine. I think you're gonna go, guys are going to go down and kill it down there at Guadalupe for sure. Good yep. luck to all the guys on the Shogun. No doubt about it. We appreciate it, Pete. Have a great time on that quad ride. I'm really looking forward to that report. Sounds like you guys are going to have a great time, and uh, wish all the anglers good luck. We'll talk to you hopefully tomorrow, and if not, certainly next week. All right. Thanks, guys. Keep up the great work. Talk to you soon. I appreciate Um, that, Pete. Yeah, good stuff for sure. Hey, we're going to be right back with more good stuff when we return on Let's Talk Hookup and a Mightier 1090 and a Let's Talk Hookup app.
This is Brandon Hayward with Bite Sport Fishing here to talk about Parker Boats and the crew at West Coast Marine. In the spring of 2013, I bought my first Parker. When it came time to rebrand from one-man charters to Bite Sport Fishing and add to my fleet and start running out of Davies Locker in Newport Beach and Fisherman's Landing this summer season, I chose a Parker. When clients ask why I chose Parker, I always say, I could have had any boat, but my 2320 is perfect for my white sea bass offshore and lobster program. Almost 6,000 hours on my 2320 pilot house over the past six seasons has shown me that Parker is the ultimate West Coast charter boat. It's what customers expect. These style workhorses offer everything anglers need as in a stable platform with huge deck space for our west coast style of live bait fishing parker's a big reason why i run more charters than any other small boat operation in southern california i like my 2320 so much that i bought another one and while you never know what's going to happen with fishing i know it won't be my last parker i buy from west coast marine if fishing isn't something you do but who you are then parker's for you be it a one-day charter or a lifetime of ownership if you're ready for a new parker at a fair upfront and honest deal you need to go see kevin kelly at west coast marine check out their inventory and information at westcoastmarine.com All of us at the American Angler family want to express appreciation to our regular passengers that fish with us year after year and to the new anglers that came out this last season. We realize how precious your vacation time is, and we are truly grateful that you've chosen to spend this time with us. It's important that your experience is memorable from the moment you call the office to the time you step off the boat. Hi, I'm Lori. Call me at the office, 619-223-5414, or check us out at AmericanAnglerSportFishing.com. Come fishing with the American Angler family and make a memory. Saturday, November 6th, it's Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego, and it's our largest sale ever. Plenty of seminars by saltwater experts, over 20 reps from tackle manufacturers like Shimano. Come check out the Shimano Talica, the pinnacle of lever drag two-speed reels. The Talica features Shimano's Hagani body to prevent misalignment of moving parts under the heaviest loads. When throwing jigs, the Shimano Trinidad is your top choice. For the best ever tackle bargains, check out Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing, Saturday, November 6th. Don't give up on finicky fish and light bites. The secret to getting more bites is thinner leader for more natural presentations. That's where Seaguar Gold Label Leader Material shines. It's Seaguar's thinnest leader material yet 18% thinner and 17% stronger than any other Seaguar leader. That means it's even less visible underwater and creates more natural presentations for better catch rates on leader shy fish. With exceptional nut and tensile strength, this advanced leader material has been proven all season long on finicky tuna as big as 100 pounds on 40-pound tests. Get Seaguar Gold Label at your favorite tackle dealer or learn more at Seaguar.com. Dana Landing in Mission Bay is truly the one-stop shop for a great day on the water. Come in our expert fishing staff for just about anything you need for a great day of on-the-water fun. Looking for a fishing charter? Dana Landing has you covered with the blackjack. Perfect for up to four anglers or the impulse with up to six. Dana Landing has a huge selection with everything you need to catch small bay bass or giant tuna. We will be sure to set you up with the right gear. We even offer real repair and Mexican and California fishing licenses. Don't forget Get the amazing deli at Dana Landing with all the food, ice, and beverages you need to complete your day. Need freshwater tackle? Head to East County Bait and Tackle with all the finest rods and reels, the hottest freshwater lures, and live bait. ECBT has an amazing staff who love to share their passion for fishing. East County Bait and Tackle is located at the end of the 67 Freeway on Main Street and Lakeside. And Dana Landing is next to the Dana Lawn Tramp on San Diego's Mission Bay. Check out DanaLanding.com for more details. It's time for the Power Pro 30 Second Seminar. I like catching big fish and I like smaller reels too. How do I make sure that I have the capacity to land the big one? I fill my reels with Power Pro Max Quattro. It's 25% thinner than standard Power Pro, so you get more line on that small reel. Power Pro has a complete series of highly effective lines, including the brand new Power Pro Depth Hunter Offshore with different colors every hundred feet. Perfect for flat fall fishing. Want to learn more? Check PowerPro.com. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mightier 1090. And Rick and I are just having a great time in here this morning. And uh, give us a shout, 213-432-1090. There is uh, one open line yeah. for you, giving away a, an Anza fillet knife. It has been really busy this morning on the phones. Lots of, lots of people on hold since the beginning of the show. We actually had one drop off during the break. So right now, you could call and get a direct shot right through. 213-432-1090. Some patient callers still on hold, but we do have an open phone line there. 213-432-1090. Or you can text the show via the app. And, Rick, I had a text right here. It goes right along with the giveaway, and it's uh, about the hands and knives. It's uh, Randy from Vista, and Randy says that uh, he played two huge bluefin 
uh, with his Anza blade, and it held up so well that a uh, Vetronox never would have uh, <laughs> la- lasted that long. For yeah, sure. that yeah. high carbon steel, man. It's a, it's, it's a, a it's a different material. Like I said, there's a little bit more on your end as far as maintenance, and I, I do mean little. Like you just keep it clean and keep it oiled, and uh, and that's it. I, I'm sure that there is. I'm I'm sure that Don and Heidi were not. You know, they, they probably know the much better you should use this. That, but I, I, when I'm done with my knife, I clean it off. I put a couple of drops of olive oil on my fingers, and I run it up and down the blade. I put it in the sheath, and it has been fantastic. I, I love that knife. It stays sharp forever, which is a good thing for me because I am – like my knife sharpening game is just weak. Some people are just great with it, and I am just not. Like I'm not, I'm not good, and, uh, and getting that knife sharp and keeping it that way, I'm yeah. a huge fan of. So, yeah, I, I really like those things. They're pretty good to learn. Like you said, some lucky caller at the end of the show today is going to get one of those handmade hands on knives. How pretty cool sweet. is that? Yeah. yeah. Let's uh, jump in and let's talk to Hills. Hills from uh, Ventura. Good morning, Hills. Great to hear from you. What's up, Hills? Hey, guys. Good morning. Um, I have a bait question for, for the uh, bait expert, Corey, um, yeah. before he started making artificials. But, you know, um, uh, another thing is I was actually there when uh, Pete put uh, Sean at Fisherman's Processing uh, together with hands and knives and introduced him. Because I went at Fred Hall, and I asked Peter, I go, hey, the sportsmen use the ends and knives. And he goes, I don't know. Let's go Let's go ask him. So he goes over there, <laughs> talk to Sean. And then uh, Sean said, no, I don't know about that, ends and knives. So, they went, so he said, well, come on over. I'll introduce you. So we walk over there, and they start chatting, and look, look what happened now. So, and uh, so Pete is the guy that just puts everybody together, man. Super. What a great guy. <laughs> That's a cool story, Hills. <clears throat> um, so, um, Corey, on mackerel, you know, we – we made about we made mackerel and we we brought it to my friend's boat from the boat I was on and I had helped him make like a bait receiver out of like an uh, avocado bin thing and right. he looks at those mackerels and he took the braille and just dumped them out and and he goes I never caught anything with those and I guess what he's talking about is like they were the ones that were kind of just regular colored gray and he only wants the ones with the gr- fancy green stripes and he. He said, "Oh no, those are poison." So, what's your take on that, Corey? Are any so mackerel you mean good? Spanish mackerel to regular mackerel, well, or, or, well, or blue ones that are turning? Like, I think yeah, so. I can almost assume uh, hills. There's, uh, you know, you try to keep bait. You catch a uh, hundred pieces and put them in that uh, tote that you made into a bait receiver, and uh, some get handled wrong, and and a, a little bit of slime comes off. I mean, the best thing is not to touch them at all. Hold them over the bait tank, shake them off in the bait tank. Scoop them up gingerly. Don't put twenty of them. Don't don't put a huge scoop in there and just disrupt the whole thing. And put fifty of them in the scoop at a time. Just gingerly bucket them over. You know, if you can keep them in water the whole time, put them in the receiver. What I'm assuming the gray is is where they've been damaged, where the the okay. the skins have come off. They're maybe they they hit the deck. Maybe they uh, the sides hit. The ones that are green are obviously as healthy as heck. Right. The, the the gray is like a fungus, a fungal disease that grows on the skin when the slime is removed. And it happens with sardine and it oh, happens with smart. mackerel. Yeah. So that's <laughs> those you want to get rid of species. immediately. Because they'll they'll affect the rest of what's in well, there. Well, they're just or, not good. They're, they're just not. They're, they're not going to be. You're not going to pin a hook on that thing. He's going to take off and go get a. You know. They're never going to recover. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's best to let them go and let the bird eat it. You know. Just just get yep. it. Get it out of the hundred pieces you have. That's not what you want in there. That's not what you want in there. Yeah. Period. Okay. Yeah. That gray is a fungal. A fungal infection. There you go. Yeah. That's good tote. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hills, thanks a lot for the. Thanks a lot for the phone call, buddy. Sure appreciate you listening and appreciate hanging in there with us. That's fun. Yeah. Well, hey, we had a good text come through. This one was for Corey regarding your Cedros trip. This was from Norman in San Diego, and he's asking, Corey, how many anglers per ponga did they fish with Cedros Island Fishing Charters, and do you need to bring your own tackle? Also, what is the weight, uh, the luggage weight limit for the new flight in return? Um, again, all that from Norman in San Diego. Yeah, Norman, what a cool deal. You know, the, the weight limits, uh, like at any of them, are in that 30-pound range, and uh, here's the cool part about it is Jesus to pilot with this killer plane has never weighed anything because he's never you know just i mean don't, katie's probably gonna chew my ear off but 
It literally, they, they, he doesn't check the weight. Just keep it minimal. You yeah. know, just keep it minimal. Uh, like I said, he he didn't weigh anything. He put it all on the plane and off. He went. probably got quite a bit to spare. I think he, so. You know, like uh, I think so. Probably has that in his back pocket. They tell you thirty, knowing that eh, if you if you snuck over that a little bit, we're, we've got plenty of buffer built in. Yeah, I I think so. And 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 you know, the plane holds six people, and in the pongas, it's uh, three per ponga. Nice. But it changes, right? So like. Uh, Four people wanted to go kayaking, mm-hmm. so it's just two of us. It was just Javier, and myself, and in the in the ponga, How you know, sweet, and man. bass fishing, and and if that's the kind of thing you want to do, just sign up for next year, you yeah. know, and that whether it's one of Benny's trips or one of mine or any of them, really, yeah. you know, whatever whatever outfit you're going with. But if you want to fish with me and you want to go have a good time, uh, definitely give Katie a call or check uh, Cedros Island. Uh, Fishing charters, right? Fishing charters, there it is. Yeah, or, or Sato's Kayak Fishing, I think, was the original one. Yeah. So, yeah, you can give Katie a call and sign up. I know uh, Tim and Eric, Tim from Ojai, uh, they got off the four day, and literally before the plane landed, <laughs> had already contacted Katie and signed up for the five day. That's cool. Yeah, so they upgraded and went to the five Taking day. Taking an extra fishing day in there. Oh, how do you not? Which now, with that flight, too, I mean, you're you're getting, I mean. It's ba- four days of fishing. Yeah, right? you're basically getting a full day that you weren't even getting before. Or maybe you'd get a couple hours in before. You're basically getting a full another full day now. Well, and and it's it's just, can I say badass? Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> seriously. Can, because that's what it is. Play, it's rock star status. That's it's cool. It's leather seats. Wow. On a turbo prop plane. Yeah. And you're at the island in an hour and 15 minutes. Oh, that sounds so cool, man. I know. So, That's and great. there's still time to get on. I know uh, Katie was talking about some spots still open for the end of the year. Yeah. And the yellowtail fishing is incredible. And Greg, uh, Greg sent us a text. I don't have it in front of me, but I remember seeing it. Greg from San Clemente uh, went down in July and he, he said via text he had the 46 pounder, yeah. his best one ever, 46 pounds. And, and was wondering about the bait when, when he was down there, there was a bunch of bait. And we still saw schools of bait in that uh, uh, before San Augustine Point. Mm-hmm. There was a bunch of schools of bait there, and we saw some schools of bait on the lee of the island, too. And it's all sardine. Okay. Yeah. And we saw some mackerel through the kelp at the north end, too. That's awesome. Yeah, God, I know. It, it just makes me so fired up to, it, to get back down. Here's something we didn't talk place. about, too, is there's a huge amount of bonito around that oh, island okay. right now. And they're all, like... Minimal four pounds up to eight pounds. Really? Yeah, there, it is just a tremendous amount of uh, Benito. <laughs> and it's just a life around there. The yeah. Barracuda, the Benito. Uh, we saw a free swim in sea bass. We never had a chance at, at hooking uh, okay. a sea bass. But we saw like a 30, 40-pound sea bass. She's swimming amongst kelp stringers? Swimming amongst the kelp. Sick. And uh, like hooking a three-pound calico just comes to my mind right now. I had a... Like a 30, 35 pound yellow, literally at, in gaffing range at the boat, trying to eat the bait out oh of my, come the, on out of Calico's <laughs> mouth. Yeah. That's so cool. I'm just remembering all this as we're talking. That's yeah, great. I know. What, what was uh, what what did you? What was the most effective thing for you, bass fishing? Uh, bass fishing. I know you're a big weedless guy. Did, it, was that was that? Did it, you stick to that, or what was the deal for? What was the ticket? I did. I stayed with the uh, seven inch weedless the entire time. Uh, when I fished with uh, Virgil and the son uh, Zach, uh, Zach fished uh, uh, like a one ounce underspin mm-hmm. with a five inch Viejos, and he was catching those, you know, twelve to 13, 14 inches, having a great time. Javier had a seven pounder Ooh. on the same rig, Rad. seven pounder, and just down like ten feet, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, in, in 60 feet of water, down 10 feet. Uh, half ounce, three quarter ounce. How, how much I, weight three, do you like on your that underspin thing? It was a three quarter to one ounce kind of thing. But on yeah. your on your weedless, on the weedless, it's it's, it's the uh, three quarter ounce. Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. By far, you cool. can just keep it down. You can burn it, slow it down. It almost swims on the sink pretty good. You fish three quarter on pretty much everything. I like, do. Okay, just just because it swims on the sink too. Yeah, you know? right. You, you you can keep it on the surface if you want, but it allows you to 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 swim it down. It, it does. Okay, yeah. and. Uh, how do I talk about this one, man? The yellowtail fishing, when we get in an area where there was yellowtail, Rick, I was, people aren't even going to believe it. The people <laughs> on the trip are going to believe it because they saw it, they witnessed it. But 
I was doing something so I can almost call stupid. I mean, it, <laughs> it was a little unorthodox. It was kind of crazy, but skip jigging okay. I, like you do for two. Oh, sure. So I was using which just you know, describe what that is. Super cool. I mean, you're you're casting a lure out and, and physically skipping. On you're not allowing the lure to swim as it normally would, holding the rod high, winding as fast as you can, and it, it's it is it is exactly that. It's skipping across the surface rather than biting into the water and swimming. Rick, it's out of the water ninety percent of the time. Okay, right? I mean, literally skipping it, and I hooked yellows over forty pounds, blowing out of the water. Literally, like, no joke, blowing out of the water. I hooked 30-pounders, and when I talk about bass gear, a 300 tranks. Oh, come on. 300 <laughs> tranks. Wait, listen how crazy. It's kind of funny. 300 tranks, a 708 Seeker signature rod, 708 rated 12 to 20-pound, <laughs> with 65-pound Power Pro, with an 80-pound fluorocarbon leader. Okay. Like, no joke. And there, I hooked fish that, that I literally had no chance. Oh, no chance. No chance. But the problem with it was, so then what happens? I mean, you've got that fish hooked on 65 to 80. Oh, I mean, you do, oh you've got, got a chance. To, something's got to give somewhere. Oh, like, oh. I mean, do they get into the kelp? Do they straighten your hooks? You Some just... went through the kelp and a, and a kelp, you know, quote, quote, quote unquote, kelp cutter style rig yeah. worked totally well. Uh, a lot of them were in open areas. Okay. So, and okay. uh, over hard bottom. In like 20 to 40 feet of water. You could see the Garibaldi swimming. Oh, that's so cool. And so you, I totally had a chance. I had fished over 30 pounds doing that. This Rick. is, I mean, bass gear. Like not even bass not gear. even big bass gear. Yeah. This is a 300 size reel. Yeah. Sick. Oh, that's cool. Oh, my God. And that, <laughs> that Tranks 300, just straight up the gearing and the meat to handle it all. <laughs> I, I love, love it. it. Yeah, that's cool. I want to go back right now. Yeah, me too. I'm well, ready. let's let's go back into the phone calls. We got a I bunch of guys it. standing by. How about next up? We talk to Dave calling us from Anza. Good morning, Dave. Welcome to Let's Talk. Yeah, I'm full lather. Good morning, Dave. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Glad for this open forum because I have a field report for you. Been up here in the Eastern Sierras for the past week. Set up here at June Lake, and um, you know, a lot of people call this the second season of the. Second season here in the High Sierras, I call it the best season. Days are pleasantly warm. Nights are kind of cool. Had a little fresh dusting of snow up high. Fall colors are going off. Crowds are light. And the fishing is really good right now, too. Um, I've been uh, float tubing out there on Gold Lake on the June Lake Loop. And what we're catching now is, you know, they've been a little light on the uh, Department of Fish and Wildlife plants. But they're putting in these uh, desert hot springs trout that they're bringing in. Most of the trout we're catching are in like the three to four pound range. Had a report of an eight pounder caught down there at Silver Lake. And the uh, wow. fish, the cooler water, they're in the shallows now and they're hungry. So um, this is a great time of year to be up here in the high Sierras. Just loving it right now. Well, wow, that's great, man. Excellent report, Dave. Glad you guys are getting them. What's been the hot thing for getting bites for you? Well, I've been out on my float tube. I'm just using the mice tails, the, the, the dough power baits, and kind of drifting along in the shallows. And uh, the fish are hungry, and they're really aggressive right now, too. So, awesome, yeah. buddy. So well, one other thing good, I'd like good. to throw in, too, is, um, you know, adventures in camping. I know they're with the show with you there. I've seen them in action. You know, we're staying at the uh, National Forest Campgrounds up here. And I've seen where they bring in their trailers, spot the trailer, people come in camp out for whatever amount of time when the people drive off adventures and camping they take the trailer off they sure make it look easy <laughs> no yeah. doubt well, well said dave glad you're having such a good trip good fishing and good weather the whole nine sounds like a fun one appreciate the report and uh, we'll look forward to talking to you on the next one yeah that sounds right. cool man that weather they're up there too oh. in the sierras huh hey rick here's a text uh, you know we had several from uh, one from jeff and one from kim in San Marcos, and uh, and and another from Gary White, and all thanking Wayne and Chris. Uh, huge news from the CCA, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's regarding the license. Yeah, gone to a 365 day from point of purchase. Yeah. So. A 12-month license. Going to be interesting uh, and, and exciting and a lot of people pushing for it and happy to have it happen. So, yeah, when now when you purchase a license, you will be getting a – I don't know exactly know when, when it, that goes into effect. Yeah, it was signed in the law. Yeah, okay, great. That, that we do know. So it is happening. 
I, I would guess the first of the year. I'm sure as as more info comes out, we'll 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 find out when it does happen. But yeah, exciting news that yeah. uh, the 365 day license is is indeed happening. So yeah, yeah, good good deal for that. And and again, like you say, hats off to Wayne and Chris and and to everybody out there that's a part of CCA for making all that happen, man. That's, it's a, been that's a great l- news. Long hard push on that one for sure. Yeah, no doubt about it. All well, right, hey, let's try to sneak one more in there. We got a quick one from Bruce in San Diego. Morning, Corey, uh, Rick. Yeah, I got a uh, question for Corey. Uh, what was your biggest calico? On that trip, it was uh, in that seven-pound range, six and a half. And, and, you know, Cedros has some beautiful quality fish. We didn't have the opportunity to go fish Benitos. We didn't have the opportunity to go fish Chester's. And those places produce some really good-sized fish, like a like Benito's, on, you know, an average of four to five, six pounds with some seven, eight-pounders, nines maybe. Cedros is like the two to five-pound factor. It's a lot of them. And even on the Lee, like you can have fun catching – uh, like 12 to 16 inch fish, you know, like having fun doing that. And there are a lot of four to five pounders. And of course, I mean, there's some definite nine, ten. Oh yeah. It, there, there are big ones live there, but it's, it's just known for crazy, great action, hook yeah. a fish, have a cloud of fish following it up. I, I always remember the, I always said like I, I really like fishing a lead head and a seven inch Viejo there. That's like my favorite thing to fish, but, but I would always warn people like this is not a, it is an expensive way to fish fish because the problem with a seven inch viejo on a two pounder it's a little too long is all of yeah they can't get all that bait in their mouth and so when you wind a fish in the tail is hanging out behind it and the cloud of calico bass coming up bite the tail off yeah and uh and you're back to another bait and that is the coolest problem to have in the world of fish i love it bring it on yeah totally hey great phone call bruce appreciate it very much hey we're gonna be right back let's talk up we're gonna find out who's won this killer fillet knife rick from hands of fillet knives when we return on the Let's Talk Up app in the mightier 1090. If you're looking for a high-quality cocktail that's also easy to enjoy on your next fishing trip, check out Cutwater Spirits' lineup of canned cocktails. Cutwater's master distiller and co-founder, Yusuf Cherney, is a hardcore fisherman. In fact, he developed Cutwater with all his favorite adventures in mind. Yusuf takes Cutwater's award-winning spirits, uses them to make real cocktails, and then puts them into cans so you can take them anywhere. It's like they were made for fishing because they were actually made for fishing. Check out their popular canned margarita made with real tequila, the zesty vodka mule or the spicy bloody mary which has some serious bite they also make super refreshing vodka sodas and grapefruit lime and cucumber flavors just crack the can and enjoy a bar quality cocktail even when there's no bar in sight back at the dock or at your evening anchorage in catalina cutwater cocktails are exactly what you need for your next fishing trip you can check out all 18 of cutwater's canned cocktails at cutwaterspirits.com and then look for them at your local liquor store then go ahead and set your cocktail free please enjoy responsibly Great fishing is what C4 Sports Fishing in Mission Bay is all about. With free parking and fully stocked tackle shop, C4 Sports Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Apollo, Outer Limits, Elgato Doe, Pride, Polaris Supreme, Tribute, Pacifica, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new C4 Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest taff and full day trips available. C4 Sport Fishing. For charters or schedule, check C4Landing.com. Run by fishermen for fishermen in Mission Bay. Turner's Outdoorsman, Southern California's number one shooting, hunting, and fishing tackle retailer since 1971. It's right in your neighborhood. Now with stores throughout Southern, Central, and Northern California. No one does it better. Turner's Outdoorsman brings you the best prices and selection, plus a knowledgeable staff that will help make your day on the water or in the field more fun. Stop by your neighborhood Turner's Outdoorsman. To find the location nearest you, check the web at turners.com and sign up for special deals and more. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. 
All right. Good morning. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up. And one lucky caller today went in that uh, handmade hands of filet knife over 30 years of uh, making them in San Diego County. And that's Randy. Randy in Costa Mesa. Congratulations. Yeah, Rand- Randy, congratulations. You're stoked on, on that knife. And, man, uh, super fun show, Corey. I-, I love I love these days when it's just us and uh, callers. And a lot it's, of fun. It's, it's just hanging out with buds, talking, fishing. And uh, I had a great time doing it with you. And we get to do it again tomorrow. We've got another great show coming for you with another buddy, Carl Schmidt from Fisherman's Landing. We're going to get a lot of insight on that great fishing that's going on, all that big fish outside, what's going on at the landing, what we have to look forward to coming up this fall, a lot more of your phone calls. Going to be a great show and a lot of fun with a good buddy and Carl. So look forward to that. Corey, great time today with you, and we'll look forward to having you all back tomorrow morning on Let's Talk Hookup, 7 to 9 a.m. right here on the Let's Talk Hookup app and the mightier 1090.